Oh, you just gonna come interrupt my video, huh? Here he comes. <laughs> Where he at? There he is. Yes, he's just standing at the door. He's waiting on me? Yes. Yep. What's going on, YouTube? Hope everybody's well. Hope you're safe during this time. I just wanted to make a real quick video related to the JB4. Um, I've had it well over a year now. Um, I know it's ups and downs, it's limitations and it's benefits. I've done my homework, done my research, and uh, I wanted to address some of the things I've been seeing. I used to see it a lot in the past and it kind of died down, but I've seen it a lot again. There's a lot of people just uh, giving out bad information, pretty much. I'm seeing a lot of terrible map sixes, to be specific. So, there's a great blog on Stillen's website. I'll link it down low. It basically tells you what these turbos can and can't do and to remain in their efficiency zone. The way you want to set your map six up is to also remain in that efficiency zone. The, the blog is specific to the red sport, but you can use those parameters and kind of calculate based on the stock non-red sports turbo boost uh, PSI settings and calculate for the, for the red sports, about five PSI difference. A lot of people on, uh, on these map sixes that I'm seeing, specifically on Facebook forums, uh, some YouTube videos, they're starting their map six at 1500 RPM, like plus four, plus five. You, you can't, you just can't do that. It's JB4 is a boost control at the end of the day. You can only just raise and lower the boost. It can't change any of the other parameters like an Ecutech tune can do to accommodate for having so much boost down low. So when you're asking for the JB4 to raise the boost at 1500, 2000 RPM by plus four, plus five, all you're doing is pulling timing. Your car is running worse. The problem is that I'm also seeing is a lot of people saying, yeah, here's my map, it runs great. But they're also not telling you how they know it runs great. They're just saying it runs great because they're hitting the gas and the car moves. They're not getting any logging done. They're not posting the logs to N54 Tech. They're not seeing any of the timing jumps, per, uh, dips and timing. Um, they're not monitoring for knock, anything like that. So a lot of these people are saying, why is my car not working right? Here's my map six. I look at the map six and before I even look at the log, I say, you're over boosting. You gotta know the limitations of these JP4. So I'm gonna pause right here for a second, post a screenshot of my map six, and I would recommend anybody, light, even lightly modded, to use this map six and tell me how your car feels because I guarantee if you have anything that's significantly higher boost, low or high, you're pulling timing. So here's the map six that you should run. So now that you've taken a look at that, compare it to your map six and think about any time where you've been driving the car and maybe it's been a lag when you hit the accelerator or maybe you've been going and it doesn't feel like it's quite running right or anything of that nature. And then take this, see if you can find a log from that day. Matter of fact, before you even change to my map six, go drive your car, see how it feels and, and grab a log. And the biggest thing I can tell anybody on here is always log when you're making changes especially and post the log to N54 Tech, especially if you're not skilled at reading logs. There's some guys on, Terry's on there, uh, DDN Spider's on there, uh, Jay Brome, all those guys will read the logs, they know how to read these logs, and they'll tell you right away whether you like the response or not. If you're, if you're over boosting, you're pulling timing, if your graph looks terrible, they'll tell you. You might get the bad news, but you'll know how to fix it after that. So I just wanted to make this video as a kind of a, a word of caution. There's some people out there handing out map sixes that it's just asking the car to do too much. It's asking those these small turbos to do too much. People are boosting to plus eight, plus nine, plus ten psi. You can't, not on these cars. Even if you got full down, down pipes, all that stuff. You, if you do that on JB4, you're asking to bring your car to the dealership. That's all. That's all I can. That's the best way I can put it. If you ask the car to do too much on JB4, you're just going to end up in a dealership. When I'm when I've run the car on peak that. 7.5 .7 PSI right in the middle, right in the heart of the, of the, of the RPM band. The car runs strong. I haven't lost any non-Q50 on the road except for an M3 running that map. I've scat packs, all types of other cars. I've, I've rammed down with ease because the car is not pulling timing. It's not working against itself. All these other guys, they want to put plus 9, plus 10 PSI thinking that their car is going to be faster because it's boosting more. Meanwhile, the ECU is like, I can't do this and it's pulling timing and your car is running slower. So, don't be boost hungry. Don't be number hungry, number happy, and be trying to throw all this boost at the car up, down low and up high and just make the car work against itself. So just a word, quick word of caution. Another quick um, thing I wanted to, to mention was people are always asking me, are the EWG wires worth it? Uh, are they worth the $80, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, I would say yes. They make the torque come on 
much quicker, much much faster. They spool the tur it seems like they spool the turbos up quicker, and it, and it hits much harder lowering the RPM when you go wide open throttle. Now, I had to relearn how to launch my car once I had the EWG wires on because it basically went from I would go wide open throttle and it would kind of start to spin at the top of first and I would kind of have to short shift to get into second without spinning to I had to start even shorter shifting or pedal throttling it to not spin and I got 275 uh, 4019s on the back Indy 500s and I was still spinning like crazy because of how hard the torque was kicking in so for 80 bucks though the EWG wires are great definitely helps on roll racing I mean it helps in all aspects but definitely helps on roll racing when you're not having traction issues it just what they do is they elect or they can control the electronic waste case you can open and close the electronic waste case at different parameters and it helps the car again to spool the turbos faster and uh you really feel it in pants when you, that torque hits a lot sooner than it did with, without them. Um, so that's all I really wanted to say is um, do your research if you're a JB4 person. Um, don't just throw numbers at the JB4 at the, on the map six and just think like you know oh it can handle the boost because it, it probably can't, especially right now in the heat with this in the summer months. Don't don't just plug numbers in that are too high for the JB4 and expect it to handle it. And if you don't have a heat exchanger, just drop everything and get that now before you make a single change. Just get a heat exchanger first and foremost. Uh, so again, I'll leave some links in the in the description to the N54 Tech Forum. Always get a log and always post there. They'll tell it to you straight. I'll, I'm on that forum too. I'll help you out as I can. Um, use, like I said, use my map six if, as, as you want. I would say use that map or you can even start at plus two PSI. Go like one PSI from where I am. I use mine pretty conservatively because I'm looking for longevity. I take it, I'm very careful with how I do all my um, pulls and all my maps. I'm, I'm very conservative. So you can maybe start at plus two PSI and ramp up by one PSI each. Um, and just ask me questions in the comments because I'm always replying to people. I'm always commenting. I'm always helping people out. Um, so if you got any more questions, just ask me in the comments. Um, there's no disrespect to any other person with JB4. Uh, no disrespect to anybody that their maps are significantly different. I just know that me doing my homework, posting numerous logs, talking to numerous people, and having them explain why or why not something is working out. I just know that what works with, with this platform from a standpoint of not pulling timing and having the car work against itself. So hopefully this will help you out. Um, if not, sorry for wasting your time. I um, appreciate you checking out the video and uh, let me know if you have any questions. All right, thanks a lot.